minutes after six, so we'll go ahead and call the uh, briefing session to order or the executive of uh, the work session. Uh, the first item up tonight is to discuss the uh, agenda items. So, uh, Uh, the first uh, agenda item is are the uh, the minutes of the July 21st council meeting. Uh, I'm sorry. And there are there is yeah I need to say on on the, the minutes there's one correction and that's no, item number three WS. Uh, Trey Shanks of Freeze and Nichols, T R E Y, uh, instead of Troy. So if y'all will make that correction. And that's the only one. Any, anybody got anything else they want to say about me? Uh, first item on uh, the next item on the consent agenda is an amendment to the five year uh, fixed rental. Master Agreement uh, with Documation of North Texas, and this is to amend that contract and add another printer. Uh, and that five-year uh, total would be fourteen thousand eight hundred twenty dollars. And what that does is it adds another printer onto our contract with them, and replaces a current printer, and will also allow us to get rid of another printer in Public Works. So over over the five years, it's a cost savings by reducing from two printers to one printer that will handle both functions. And it is, uh, we, are, we have budgeted those funds in the FY16 <coughs> budget, so those, those funds are budgeted <coughs> in the proposed budget. Um, Anybody got any, anything to say about it? Call safety. Call safety. Definitely. Okay. All right. Keep it going. Uh, the next item on consent is uh, to enter into a uh, interlocal agreement with the Council of Governments for Actuarial Shared Services, and this is with the firm of Gabriel Rotor and Smith and & Company, and they have provided our actuarial services before. Uh, we're required to have an actuary uh, do our uh, analysis for our, uh, other, our other post employment benefits other than pension uh, as required by GASB, so this will uh, enter into a contract with them, with GRS, to do those actuarial services. And that those funds are budgeted as well. And that is through the COG, as I said, an interlocal agreement. So they have a, a and we are getting able to get the rate that they are providing to all the cities through COG. Okay. Comments? Okay, that, that won't be entered. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Would you strike that for the minute? <laughs> uh, the next item on the regular agenda then is a resolution to award a contract and change order one for pipe bursting for wastewater improvements in West Park Estates and Plain West Editions. Uh, as noted in the agenda memo, we had 100. 1200000 budgeted for, uh, for pipe bursting. Uh, this bid came in well under our budget estimate, and so we're doing a change order one to add to the quantity. We're still within the budget amount, and this will add uh, up to the 25% maximum. Uh, if we do run into any kinds of issues uh, in the course of the construction, because this is a quantity change order, we can always do a deduct change order then to keep the price within that 25% allowable over the original bid amount. So we're not so. able to find qualified workers to do a pipe bursting crew? We were not able to. Uh, we went several months trying to hire uh, for pipe bursting and so felt that the uh, best thing to do was to, be go, was to go ahead and bid it out and uh, see what kind of cost we got. And as I said, they came in well under our budgeted estimates. So uh, it makes sense to contract that work instead of trying to hire people and buy the equipment and, and everything. So the extra 25% gives us more linear feet? Is that what Correct. We're just adding to the quantity. Okay. 
I thought we just added to the amount. I was going <laughs> <laughs> to ask about that. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the company that is that uh, was the low bid has done work for us before. They worked for us last year and successfully completed the project to number of edition. It was about one fourth the size of this project. So we're very happy they came back and with another bid. The contractor has agreed to the change order. Yes. So he didn't want any more mobilization. Nope. My, my only comment is, and I, I have expressed this to the city manager, this is a construction job and it's underground and there's all sorts of opportunities for uh oh's. And so it, I think we're going to have to really keep an eye on it because we are at the absolute maximum we can pay by state law by doing it 25%. Change order. So as long as everybody's aware of that, I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with the contract. I think we've got a real good price on it. As you said, 25%, it's kind of shaky on, on construction. If we were buying widgets or something, it's okay. We'll see. No margin for error. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure we stand in the, in the contract line. You know, this really isn't that much different from, say, asphalt overlays or, or pavement lifting where we have to monitor the pound of material we're pumping in the ground or the amount of tonnage we're laying down on the street. We just have to keep a real close eye on it as we can. But to Dennis's point, I mean, there's, there's multiple ways to skin a cat, so this is one way to do it. You know, we're comfortable with doing it. Okay. Uh, the next item on the regular agenda is a resolution of the council to approve the proposal for city paid employee and retiree medical and pharmacy benefits and uh, we are recommending Maritane Health. Uh, they are a subsidiary or wholly owned by Aetna uh, for uh, stop loss insurance with HM Life and for basic employee life and accidental death and dismemberment insurance with Cigna and then adding long-term disability insurance uh, with Cigna as well. Uh, we did a request for proposals, a request for bids. Uh, we got quite a few uh, respondents on all of our insurance products, which, uh, which is very good. And uh, the bids were, were good uh, with our advisors, uh, IPS. Uh, we chose uh, these companies uh, with, for the best benefit and the best cost. We are recommending to add uh, long-term disability for all employees currently as a voluntary uh, and employee paid uh, premium, but the cost of that was, was very small. We feel like it's a good benefit to offer our employees. Uh, and also by selecting that with Cigna, uh, it gives us a multi-line discount on the other insurance products. So the actual cost then is not as much as what that 30,000 is actually less than that because of the discount for the other insurance products. What, what uh, term uh, is put in there for it to kick in, 90 days? For the long term? 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. Okay. Okay. So, will this change the benefits for the retirees at all? Uh, selecting these companies does not change the benefits, but what we are looking at is a change to the premium structure for retirees by reducing the retiree dependent coverage by 5%, or the city's portion by 5%. And that is to just bring it down more in line with what were our contribution for the retirees themselves. And as we talked about before, uh, the issue with retiree health insurance is that under GASB, we have to account for that as a liability. And so what we're trying to do is to get our retiree costs down to more manageable amounts. And, and that was one way to do that without uh, making it a, a total burden on the retirees by forcing them off or forcing their dependents off of city and insurance. And I think uh, when we give the presentation, uh, Jennifer has some information on, on what those costs look like and also comparisons on our retiree rates compared to the other uh, best southwest cities. And actually our retiree rates are still uh, much <coughs> are better than, than most of the other, the other four cities, uh, even with that 5% reduction uh, in city costs for the retiree dependent. I, 
I appreciate the work that the staff has done on this because early on it looked like that the retirees uh, were going to be kicked off the insurance program and have to go out and uh, to Obamacare. And that's uh, that still hadn't totally settled down yet. So I, I think it's real good that we're able to provide insurance with no additional cost to the retirees. I wish we could figure out a way to pick up this $12,000 cost that we're charging to the retirees' dependents. Uh, I mean, it's 0.5% of the total amount that we're paying. So it's, anyways, $12,000. It's $1,000 a month. Uh, I fully understand what, what uh, Kevin just explained, what he's trying to, to do to adjust this. But we have so few uh, spouses and families and children that the, the retirees have. I, I just feel like it would be a, a good shot in the arm to try to bring that back up. I really appreciate the adding back of the uh, long-term disability. That was one of the benefits that was taken away from us uh, as an ex-employee or former employee. We used to have that, and then when time started getting bad, that was one of many things that were cut off. And so we're adding that back, and I hope we can continue to add back some of these benefits that we had uh, prior to the recession that we went through. And full disclosure, I'm over 65. I get absolutely no benefit out of the city insurance plan. I am on Medicare, so. Thank you for answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that you have to remember is that you're asking taxpayers to pay for it, and they're the ones out there that they're getting cut corporate. They are not paying for uh, insurance. No, no, we have to compete with other cities, not not corporations. Yeah, you do. It, it all fit. It all figures in. It all figures in. It, 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 taxpayers are what are paying. It, it, it's so different when you're out in corporate America and you have to produce a product or a service, and here we raise taxes to bring in money, and you know, out there, you have to make the money somehow, and so you have to keep that in mind. When people uh, see that and read that, they think we've been cut. They've all been cut, and so you have to it, you have to temper it. I, I believe you have to temper it because that's who pays for all this. It's taxpayers. Oh, I, I realize that, but again. Our competition is not, you know, a corporation down the street. And I hear what you're saying, but I'll tell you what, the uh, mayor of Lancaster, the, the uh, can't remember his name, the one that was there before, but he was saying how used to um, benefits were fantastic for city employees, but the pay was less than out there. It wasn't competitive. And as the salaries came up, this didn't go down. Now, it went down a little bit in recession, but you know, you've got to temper that somehow because you now are competitive with out there in the corporate world, uh, the salaries that municipal employees make. So, it is very competitive. I, I think some of the past employees would like to make what some of the employees now are making. I know we've had some of them come and speak at meetings and, uh, retired fire chiefs and different ones, and, and they didn't make near what the employees make now. So, I mean, it has to be a balance somewhere in there. Well, uh, and I realize we're not going to solve this today. I, I have asked uh, Kevin to put this on the agenda for the retreat so we can talk about the entire picture of employee and retiree benefits. And that, that'll be a time we can discuss this in detail. Okay, anything else? Okay. Uh, the next item on the uh, work session briefing is to uh, receive the uh, quarterly update from our Parks and Recreation Department. So, Bart, release. Thank you, Kevin. Um, pulled up the agenda today and I saw I was the only presentation for the briefing session. So, following this report, I do have about a 45 minute presentation on fertigation and 
it's benefits to the propagation of rhizomes. We all right. You may be the only one in the room for me. Mary's trying to figure out how to do that in a minute. I'll spell it for you. I'll spell it for you. So, all right. Um, this slide is talking about our staffing changes over the last three months. I'm, I'm very proud of it because it's got a lot of white space. Uh, we have not had a lot of changes in the Parks and Recreation Department of staffing. Uh, we do have one uh, significant addition to our staff, and that is David Cotespotti, who is here with us tonight. He wanted to make sure I got put the right picture up there, I think. Um, he sent me several to choose from, but uh, I chose that. So that is David, and he's, a, he's been a great addition to our team in making sure that our park staff stays on point and uh, he does an excellent job of maintaining our parks. We had a one uh, recent crew member from our from our irrigation staff leave us for the city of Dallas. He had a career opportunity uh, that he couldn't pass up, so he left us here recently. We've made some, uh, we've had two, um, uh, we've moved two people up uh, to take uh, that, those places. Um, his assistant was moved up to that position, and then we've added a position uh, from our athletics crew. Uh, now it's now over on irrigation, so we were fully staffed on the irrigation at, at this time, which is really important because it's hot and we need our irrigation staff. Stuff running right now. So, we have had two employees in our Parks and Recreation Department who've been on FMLA uh, pretty much the entire summer. I think that's important to note, um, not because they're not with us, but because uh, we are a lean staff like, like all the departments, and our staff has done a fantastic job of, of working through the summer. Um, one of those of the parks guy is actually from our athletics crew. Um, there's only three guys that it is, so that's a, lose about a third of, of your production uh, when he's out. And, uh, the other two guys have really stepped up and done a fantastic job of maintaining our, our ball fields in, in his absence. So that's, that's one of the things we uh, Work plan accomplishments. Uh, we have completed uh, the bike lanes on Hill City Drive, and I've seen people using it, so that's a great thing. Uh, we have completed the business plan for the field house, and I know you'll be talking about that uh, in further detail at your retreat. Uh, some of the projects we are working on, again, you're probably aware of most of these, if not all of them. Um, the Armstrong Park, Armstrong Park Amphitheater Shade, that is a picture taken as of an hour ago. Um, so they are very close to completion. Uh, in fact, they anticipate completing the, the shade today. Uh, they have a project to be at in Houston tomorrow, so they are going to stay late to finish the project today. Probably with some cleanup to go from a, from a different crew, but they will finish it today. Uh, the Redbird restroom um, is uh, going to start uh, in the next week or two. Um, the generator. What about the Redbird Playground? Also, next week. We have, we have a uh, pre-construction meeting on the um, playground and the restroom uh, later this week. So, both going at the same time, and we do anticipate, once those projects are completed, uh, having a, a grand opening, reopening uh, celebration uh, of the playground and the, and the restroom, as well as the bike lanes, and celebrate those successes uh, with the community sometime in, in uh, September. Uh, the generator at the Recreation Center uh, will be done in the next uh, about six weeks. Uh, as you're aware, we've talked about the LED sign uh, that has been ordered. It's an eight-week lead time, so we just expect that to be done around the first part of October when uh, all said and done. Uh, heater boxes at City Hall, again, we're getting close to completion. Uh, batting cages for Harrington Park, uh, fire panel upgrades, all of those will be done prior to the end of the fiscal year. And then our park board is working diligently on uh, reviewing and looking at modifications of the code of ordinances, Chapter 12B, which relates to park activities. Uh, some of the significant successes we've had in the last three months, uh, kind of indicate some of the successes we've had. Uh, we've repainted uh, the Alexander Park facilities, that's the, uh, the restroom and concession stand there on the bottom left. Uh, we've painted the Lakeside Park entryway monuments. We do have a little bit of leveling still left to do, but we're working on that. Uh, we've improved the drainage at Alexander Park. We have an issue. We had an issue where the, the fields were draining uh, to, towards the home plate area, and we were losing dirt. We went with some paved stones to, to correct that. So we've installed bike racks at City Hall and Recreation Center, and they are getting used. I've seen them. Uh, we've implemented the DSD Art Trash Can Program. That has been a success. And then just a few weeks ago, we hosted the Clean Water Waste Cleanup at Lakeside Park. And the most significant thing of, of that project, I think, was. Um, all the, the words of encouragement we received from the people who came out saying there was a lot less trash this year. So that means we're doing good th things with our new trash crews uh, and taking a, a better effort to cleaning up our parks and making sure they look good. So those are all good things. From our recreation department, we had a very successful Memorial Day program, 4th of July. They have a summer day camp program with over 40 kids a week. And, and 
I, along with the residency office there, are looking forward to school coming back. <laughs> uh, and Fieldhouse, uh, we had a very successful uh, July live tournament schedule. I know Letitia, if she won't speak to it tonight, she'll speak to it at your next meeting when she has those numbers for July. But I know they're very promising, at least from a revenue perspective. And then they've had over 250 kids a week at the uh, day camp at the Fieldhouse with their SAFE program, which is uh, summer activities for everyone. So, any questions about Parks and Recreation, where we're at? So you said next week you're, you're going to get started on? Okay. The playground and, and the restroom. Very exciting. So is that like fixing to? Fixing to? That's a word I use a lot. <laughs> that's a, oh, Yankees in this. <laughs> that, that's a it, it could be early as this week, but I, I hate to say that out loud almost because uh, we've had some challenges with the restroom company in particular and, and some of their delays, but um, I would anticipate by next week the latest that both those projects will be well underway. Hey, questions, comments? I'll, I'll make a comment on, you talk about the lakeside being really uh, clean and stuff. I was in a group that picked up Redbird on that Saturday, and I was just amazed how clean it was. We was hardly any trash at all to pick up. So, clean the Because I can't go to the bathroom or play. <laughs> it's fun I can use quite as much. I don't think about that. that. There's no way to answer that. <laughs> I think it can also be attributed. It can also be attributed, I think, to uh, one of the cleanup efforts of the group that's that, that, through all the groups that have adopted our parks, as well as the two additional litter crews, litter crew members we've added to our team, has been a tremendous, tremendous success uh, for for our department. Yeah, actually, you cleaned up two parks on, on Saturday. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's great. All right. Anything else? Thank you for being uh, you. less time than you announced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, our next item is 3ES. And the City Council shall convene into a closed executive session pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Governor Code to meet with the City Attorney uh, concerning uh, pending leg legislation to wit. Garcia versus Duncanville, DC 15-5759, District Court, Dallas County, Texas, and B, Watson versus Allen et al. Uh, 415-CV-335A, United States District Court, Fort Worth Division. So at this time, it is now uh, 627, and we will convene into the executive session. and I will call our city council meeting to order. We appreciate your being here tonight. Um, uh, hopefully we can uh, move right on through our, our agenda and, and uh, be able to get out of here at a decent hour. Our first order of uh, business tonight uh, will be uh, our invocation. It will be led by Pastor Gordon Butler. He's the associate pastor of the Crossroads of Life Church. Uh, Reverend Butler, will you come up and lead us in our invocation? And then following that, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance to the uh, Texas and the you know, U.S. flag. Shall we pray? Father, we come tonight in your name, and we ask for uh, clarity of thought and speech tonight as we take care of the business at hand. God, we pray your blessing upon our leaders of this great city. God, of the residents, Lord, of, of everyone that's involved in the city of Duncanville. And Lord, that when we leave here, we will leave here on one accord as we have taken care of the people business. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mayor's report tonight will be reporting on something that uh, opened 
last Saturday night in Main Station. We have a, uh, a good number of local artists here in Duncanville, and they have wanted to open a centralized art gallery for some time. So as an experimental project, uh, they were given temporary space in Main Station for one month. And they had a, an open uh, house uh, last uh, Saturday night to celebrate this. And it was all set up and ready to go. And I want to tell you, there is some beautiful, beautiful work in that, in that building. So what I wanted to do is to encourage everybody during the course of this month, please make an effort to get by, see the gallery, and see the, the work that's being produced by local folks here in Duncanville. They have everything from photography to painting to sculpture, uh, really a great, great uh, gallery. That one thing that intrigued me in there was a, uh, a wedding gown that was made totally out of white, it looked like tissue paper in, in, in uh, Dixie cups and things like that. It was a gorgeous gown that, that had been constructed out of just plain paper. I said, I hope that on the wedding day, if they're outside, it doesn't rain because I don't think that would work. <laughs> but it, it, it's really a beautiful gallery, and I would encourage you to go by and take a look at it. It's in Main Station on the lower floor where all of the businesses are, uh, down about midway. It would be worth your effort to do that. Council member reports. Councilman Rutherford? I'd just like to, we talked about in the uh, briefing session about the Parks and Recreation Department. I'd like to just thank everybody that came out uh, last weekend to help clean up two of the parks uh, in Duncanville, Lakeside and uh, Redbird Park. I was uh, mainly over in Redbird Park and I was just telling everybody that I was really impressed with how clean the park was even before we got there. So I think the, uh, the city and then the uh, uh, volunteers are doing a good job and then the people that are taking part in the park even though council member I mean Jameson had a good reason since there's no bathroom yet over at Redbird yet there's maybe a lot of a lot of people going over there but it was very clean so councilwoman Jameson well just to follow up to what he said and we were also told in briefing that we will have our bathroom and our playground equipment started starting next week Per bar, you heard it, starting next week, bathroom and playground equipment. Okay, that's all of our council member reports tonight. They must really want to get out of here early. City manager report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to, uh, to highlight uh, the accomplishments of some of our uh, our first responders, uh, and especially uh, Duncanville Police Officer Jerry Christensen and then our firefighter EMS personnel. Uh, last week there was a, an accident on U.S. Highway 67 uh, with a, uh, a single vehicle accident and a rollover. Uh, it is believed that the victim of that car had a, a medical condition that probably caused that accident. But uh, the, the victim had no pulse, and uh, there was a, a nurse uh, who was on the road and stopped to assist. And unfortunately, I don't have that person's name. Otherwise, I would like to recognize that person as well. But then Officer Jerry Christensen stopped and uh, assisted in performing CPR on the victim and was able to get a pulse. Uh, and, and then when our firefighters and EMS uh, personnel arrived on scene, they also were able to, to keep the victim alive with a pulse, transport the person to, to uh, uh, was transported via care flight to Parkland Memorial Hospital. And at the time that the victim arrived at the hospital, still had a pulse. And I think that, that speaks well of our uh, emergency responders and, uh, and the, the, their skills and their ability and, the, and their service to uh, not only our citizens, but all the people that travel through our city. And so I would like to thank them, and especially uh, for their efforts. And so I just wanted to recognize them uh, in this uh, comment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have three proclamations tonight, so I'm going to come down and present these down at the uh, podium there.
its own. Uh, Officer Mayberry's not here tonight, is he? Is he? Come up here, sir. Let's recognize you and, and your family, if you've got anybody here. Thank you, sir, for what you do. I think it's tremendous, and, and there was a life to be saved, and yeah. you did it. Chief? Yes, sir. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, the police department acquired a uh, robot from the military surplus program. It was a robot that was uh, given to the police department at no cost, but we could not get the remote to talk to the robot. And essentially what we do is use this piece of equipment in situations where it's too dangerous for a police officer to go inside. And so uh, we were able to uh, reach out to this young man and he did a remarkable job of getting the remote to talk to the robot. And we could not do it. And so we wanted him to be recognized. Uh, he's an outstanding young man. Uh, we're very proud of what we did and I think the whole community should be proud of him. And uh, in addition, Mayor, um, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson uh, read the article, and she wanted me to recognize this young man by reading the letter. It says, Dear Adrian, please accept my best wishes and congratulations for the assistance that you were able to give the SWAT unit of the Duncanville Police Department. You helped them tremendously, and all of the people of North Texas are extremely proud of you and your accomplishments. Adrian, you represent the future, and I encourage you to continue the path of academic and personal excellence that you have established for yourself. This world is in great need of your great talents, and I am certain that you will continue to share them with others. Please give my rewards to members of your family, to your mentors and friends, and in the Duncanville Police Department, and to your classmates. Thank you for being a marvelous young man. Adrian, because what you've done for our police department, you know that $100,000 or $10,000 robot doesn't do you any good if it won't work. And we certainly needed that. And we needed the expertise, and where else do you go to get it? You go to Duncanville High School to get that expertise to make the thing work. So we're, we're really proud of you. And because of that, I've uh, prepared a proclamation which reads, whereas in 20... 14, the city of Duncanville acquired a $10,000 robot through a military surplus program which delivered the uh, equipment as is and in need of some repair to get it fully functional again. Whereas the Duncanville Police Department established a partnership with the Duncanville High School Robotics Program in an effect to have the SWAT team robot uh, repaired and returned to full functional service, and whereas the Duncanville High School junior, Adrian Mayberry, accepted the challenge and committed over 200 hours of his time outside of his normal and already busy school schedule to research and repair the uh, robot, and whereas Adrian Mayberry did successfully return the robot to the Duncanville Police Department in a fully functional and operational state, and whereas Adrian Mayberry contributions and service to the community have assisted the Duncanville Police Department by expanding the resources available to them while handling critical incidents and therefore enhance public safety delivery to the citizens. Now therefore I, David L. Green, Mayor of the City of Duncanville, Texas, do hereby urge all residents to join me in uh, commending Adrian Mayberry for his service to the community through the contributions to the Duncanville Police Department and the citizens of Duncanville. I want to say congratulations to you, sir. Do we want to get a picture?
Adrian, I've got one question. That 200 hours you spent doing this, did you get 40 hours credit from the school system? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk to them. We'll have to talk to them about that. Thank you. The next proclamation uh, pertains to Keep Duncanville Beautiful and the Property of the Month. So I'm going to ask the uh, president of the Keep Duncanville Beautiful Board if she will come up and we'll make this pre presentation and uh, the members that are here tonight from the uh, Inwood National Bank, would you please come up? Do we have them? <laughs> I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Angelica Acosta. My name is Tamara. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, Madeline, here's the plaque. I've prepared a proclamation which reads, whereas the city of Duncanville is committed to improving the physical uh, quality of community life, and whereas the Keep Duncanville Beautiful Board was established to promote this commitment, and whereas the mission of the Keep Duncanville Beautiful Board is to empower Duncanville citizens and businesses to take the responsibility for enhancing their community environment, and whereas each quarter the Keep Duncanville Beautiful Board recognizes one commercial property within the city for significant, significant improvements to the exterior portion of the property, landscaping improvements, and or long-term maintenance of the property that exemplifies high uh, quality standards, and whereas the Inwood Bank, located at 219 East Camp Wisdom Road, has been selected as the property of the month for August 2015. Now, therefore, I, David L. Green, Mayor of the City of Duncanville, Texas, do hereby urge all residents to join me in congratulating the Inwood National Bank and commending their business for contributing to the beautification of our city. Do you, do you want to read what's on the plaque? The plaque says, Keep Duncanville Beautiful, Property of the Month, Inwood National Bank, August 2015. Keep Duncanville Beautiful. And thank you for trying to do that and doing a successful job. And I also want to thank uh, Brenda Wilson, who could not be here tonight. She's the board member who drives around looking at commercial properties. And I know she'll be glad to know that you all were able to show up. So thank you for... And the third proclamation is very dear to my heart. Um, do we have someone here from the Social Security Administration? Please come up and give us your name, please. I know because he cannot pronounce my name, so he referred back to me. My name is Angie Hoquang, and I represent Social Security Administration to be here with you tonight. Angie, I knew how to do that. <laughs> uh, I prepared a proclamation which reads, whereas on August the 14th, 1935, President Franklin D. Ro Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act into law, and whereas Social Security is a social insurance program under which workers uh, earn coverage for retirement, survivors, and disability benefits by paying Social Security taxes on their earnings, and whereas Social Security serves a vital financial protection for working men and women children, uh, those with disabilities, and the elderly, and whereas Social Security has also administers the Supplemental Security Income Program, which is funded by general revenue and provides cash assistance to the aged, blind, and disabled persons who have very li limited means, and whereas the Social Security Program is the cornerstone of economic protection on which workers can build a comfortable retirement through pensions, insurance, savings, and other income, and whereas Social Security is committed to providing the American public choices for, concerning, for conducting business with the agency, the Social Security website offers online service 
applications and the program in, uh, information for beneficiaries, employees, and the public. And whereas my Social Security allows people quick, convenience, and um, secure access to their personal Social Security records, a personal My Social Security account is a valuable source of information uh, beginning in employees working years and continuing throughout the time they receive Social Security benefits. And whereas the city of Duncanville recognizes the importance of Social Security benefits to the welfare of its citizens and joins the Social Security Administration in celebrating its past and building its future. Now, therefore, I, David L. Green, mayor of the city of Duncanville, Texas, do hereby all urge all residences of the city of Duncanville to join the nation in celebrating Friday, August the 14th, 2015, as the 80th anniversary of the signing of the Social Security Act. And I want to say personally, thank you. <laughs> I enjoy my Social Security. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you, he, he read everything I should say to you. But the last thing, I have a question for you. Do we have anyone in this room, including all the council members, my social security account? You are good, Mr. Swartz. That's all? One, two, three, four. Mary, you need to bring me back here to talk about my social security account. It is very important. Young like you, you want to know about social security benefits? You need to open an account. Oh, you will. <laughs> Mayor, you want to, in case that you lose your Medicare card, you need to have a social security account to order a replacement Medicare card online. And thank you so much for having us today. Um, to celebrate our 80th anniversary, Social Security Administration anniversary, not the 80th birthday of Mayor or Angie. Thank you. I want you to understand that that act was, was put uh, into effect prior to my birthday. <laughs> Item number 10P is to receive the financial report as of June 30, 2015. Richard Summer. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, let's get right into the financial report. As of June 30th, we expect our revenues and expenditures to be about 75% of the budget. That is the benchmark. Property tax and water revenues, they tend to be seasonal. And I'd like to remind everyone that tax comes in very early in the year. Our financials will reflect that we've received about a little over 98% of our property tax already, and that's not untypical. And uh, of course, our water revenues tend to be cyclical with the amount of rain and the amount of heat. So um, while we've uh, experienced some very wet uh, months earlier in the spring, we're now hot and dry. And uh, we're hoping that um, that water usage um, from a revenue standpoint um, starts to close the gap a little bit because we've been running somewhat behind. So if we look at the general fund uh, outlook, our available fund balance as of June 30th is um, 2.9 million in excess of the 75 day fund reserve. So we're sitting in a very nice position. Property tax revenues, as I reiterated, are 98%, a little over 98%. And uh, property tax revenues about 6% higher than the same time last year, and that's primarily an increase in taxable values. Sales tax revenue reflects a 1% decrease from the previous year as of June, and uh, 
keep in mind that the data in the financial report reflects seven months of revenues because we are two months in arrears receiving property ta uh, sales tax from the state of Texas. So this chart will um, set the tone for the, the uh, charts to follow. Uh, the, the blue line um, that you see that goes up uh, is the previous three-year average, and then the red line that starts out is um, the actual uh, revenues for this year, and then at the end of that red line, you see a dotted green line, and that's the estimate of where we project will end uh, the year. And then, um, of course, the straight purple line that goes up uh, is the 2015 budget as it was adopted in the st on a straight line approach. And so you can see from that that uh, our general fund revenues have uh, gone up and, and, and exceeded uh, uh, because of the way that they come in with the property tax being the, the largest one. But by the end of the year, we expect those revenues to uh, taper off and to end the year just slightly below uh, where we budgeted or where the, we adopted the budget. If you look at the general fund revenue, again, this is uh, lasering out the property taxes, and you see the huge spike up in December and January, and then that tapers off, and there's very little collected after the January, February time frame throughout the rest of the year, but we expect that we'll come in right at budget on property tax. General fund sales revenue is one of the areas that we've been somewhat concerned. We experienced a tremendous amount of growth in the building industry in uh, 2014, and uh, we had hoped that that would continue into 2015, but it hasn't, uh, it has not done that. It has not performed the way that we anticipated that it would. And so you see our red line is well below that uh, straight line uh, budget. And uh, as we get toward the end of the year, we're closing the gap upward uh, a little bit closer to that, but uh, we definitely will finish the year a little bit less than, than where we budgeted. If we look at our expenditures, um, you see that they very closely mirror that straight line approach and uh, they just uh, start out the year. We have quite a few expenditures that we have in the beginning of the year and so um, just a little bit above and then that line comes down and crosses under and then kind of mirrors for the last few months um, that straight line approach. If we go to the utility fund, we take a look at that. Um, our revenue, um, in, it includes a $693,000 refund that we got from Triver Trinity River Authority. Um, that was a settle up payment because um, our, our flows uh, for the prior year had been so much less than what we had budgeted for. Um, so that was a significant impact to the water utility fund. Water and sewer rate increases were enacted in January of 2015 and um, even though those uh, rates increased water revenues have decreased by about five percent from prior year uh, and that's primarily due to the wet spring that we had and sewer revenues have increased about 15 percent over the same time last year <clears throat> so again if we look at uh, utility fund revenues the red line there uh, we've uh, performed most of the year well under that straight line approach and uh, as we enter these hotter, drier months, we're hoping that uh, we close that gap uh, up a little bit on revenues. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then on exp uh, the uh, utility fund expenditures, um, the good news is that we're also below where we budgeted on expenditures. And uh, as we get through those last months and we have um, higher water usage, those costs will creep up towards uh, our budgeted amount, but we still think that we'll come in a little below budget on the expenditure side, which will help offset the gap in revenues. If you look at our innovation fund, this is a list of the things that we've completed so far uh, through the end of June. And so there's quite a few things that we've accomplished. And then if you look at um, those things that are still outstanding, some of these things are in progress and some of them um, are about to be started and some of them are yet to be started. So they kind of 
go through the gamut of uh, different uh, stages. And um, with that, I'll conclude my presentation. And if there's any questions, I'll entertain them now. Questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, thank you very much. Item number 11P is to receive a report from Just Balls regarding the Duncanville Fieldhouse. Good evening. I have the June report from the Duncanville Fieldhouse. Um, June's been a busy month for us with um, the new programs that we're implementing at the Fieldhouse. So in regards to a month over month, or at this time last year, we were at 91,000. This year we finished out at $160,387. Um, in regards to where those growth came from, um, primarily came from summer camp. Um, last year around this time, we were about $6,000 with our summer camp. Um, at the month of June, when we, took, when we did these numbers, we finished out at about 91,000 um, in regards to with our summer camp. Um, food court and cafe increased as well, um, about $8,000. Martial art is continuing to increase um, as that jiu-jitsu class continues to grow, as well as our cheer and dance class. In regards to um, just a breakdown in regards to summer camp um, with income, of course, registration um, started back in as early as April. So some of this um, runs over. So registration continues to um, continues to apply as we have new students to, um, to sign up to summer camp. So registration fees were roughly about $25,000 and tuition for our weekly tuition was about $73,765. Field trips, um, some field trips are sponsored by parents versus some field trips are sponsored by the, um, the program themselves. So the parent paid field trip portion of that was roughly $9,000 worth of income and the t-shirts in regards which are mandatory for the students are roughly around $2,400. Um, dollars. Um, July numbers are not totally up to date as of yet. Uh, we haven't got our final number um, from finance just yet, but um, when these numbers were calculated, we were right at $85,000 for income for summer camp for the month of July. Um, in regards to expenditures, um, we've took into uh, account the salaries as well as the staff expenses. Um, salaries roughly for all of my summer campers, roughly around $30,000. Um, staff expenses, which include things like equipment to, to, to have classes, um, like our cooking classes and things of that nature, um, as well as our cost for what the t-shirts cost. Um, all of our rep representatives or all of our employees were trained with CPR training, which cost us a little bit over $1,000. Um, and then any additional things such as field trips um, and buses, those costs are included there, both with field trips being about $5,000 and buses costing $4,500. Um, so total expenses right at $45,000, which is roughly giving the um, summer camp uh, with extrapolating the expenses as well as the revenue, given about a $50,000 profit for the month of June. In regards to upcoming event, um, I went as far as to, um, of course, we're in August at this point. We have our Masters League Basketball Tournament, which is going to be the first time we host the Masters League Basketball Tournament. It's an older division. Currently, we have Masters League Basketball games on Sundays, but this is going to be the first time we actually offer a league basketball tournament, and that's coming up on the 15th and 16th. Um, Duncanville's own Perry Jones, he's going to um, host a basketball camp. He graduated from Duncanville High School. He's coming back here on the 18th through the 20th and hosting a basketball camp at the field house um, he was with Oklahoma City now he's with the Celtics um, summer camp of course ends on the 21st who and basketball combine as well as the skill camp is going to be on the 21st and the 22nd and then we're in the process of planning another back to school event just to give you some updates in regards again to summer camp highlights our highest at our highest point we had 360 registered on average we have about 240 weekly attendants some of them go to see grandma back and forth. Um, some of them might you know, be with a different parent from week to week, so it kind of fluctuates. Um, summer camp, again, the students range from five to 14. Um, they do, of course, they have bi-weekly field trips, and um, they're, most of the students are from the Duncanville and surrounding areas, including Cedar Hill and DeSoto. 
Um, just to give you a heads up, we're in the process, of course, since we had such a great response for summer camp, we're still trying to capture some of those for our after school program. And these are just a sign up, um, or just so we're starting to advertise our after school program um, in hopes to capture some of those same students. And that can be, you can register for summer camp online. I think that's all I have for you. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. I just would like to ask you about the, uh, we had talked about before what you were charging. For, and some, for summer camp? Summer camp, and then if you're talking about an after school program so that you would be uh, not, um, how can I say this, so that any kind of daycare would not feel like they were in competition, but that you were as high as they were, and also in order to recoup. Yes. Um, in regards to summer camp, uh, we are relatively, we, we did a market analysis to everybody kind of who was around in the area. Um, for the most part, summer camp, if you're a single um, child, it's $85. If you're a city employee or you're an ISD or a teacher, um, any type of city employee goes down to 75 Of course, if you have an additional um, sibling, you get in a sibling discount, which is roughly about 10% discount. Um, most of our families there have between, we have quite a bit of, of, of dual families in our summer camp program. As far as our after school program, we're around that same rate. We're about $75, which is a little bit cheaper than, than that of the, the local daycares. Um, but what we implement with that as well is you kind of give them an a la carte selection in regards to picking what sport they'd like to do before mom and dad picks them up. So of course we pick them up, we do tutorials while in t for at least an hour, and then you go to a sport of your choice. So when mom and dad pick you up, you've already done your homework and you've already finished your sport and you're ready to go home. So that's the reason why we have that, that $75 mark for at that point. So uh, it's still 85 and 75 for Yes, ma Yes, ma'am. And that is a little bit cheaper than, than our local daycares. Okay, and that still covers all the costs that yes, you incur? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It does. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 12 is citizens' input. Uh, City Secretary, do we have any cards tonight? No. Okay, well, we'll dispense with that. Item number, um, uh, the next items will be consent items. That would be 13C, 14C, and 15C. And I'll ask the uh, City Secretary if she will read the captions on those. 13C, consider the minutes for the July 21st, 2015 regular City Council meeting. 14C. Consider a resolution of the City Council of the City of Duncanville, Texas, approving the First Amendment to the five-year fixed rental master agreement for replacement upgrade multifunctional copier with documentation of North Texas, Inc., provided in Exhibit A in the amount of $14,820, authorizing the City Manager to execute the necessary documents and providing for an effective date. 15C. Consider a resolution of the City Council of the City of Duncanville, Texas, approving the terms and conditions of an interlocal agreement for cooperative purchasing with the North Central Texas Council of Governments for Actuarial Shared Services, authorizing the City Manager to execute all paperwork and necessary documents and providing an effective date. Council, you've heard the captions read. Is there a motion concerning these? Move, Move to approve. Move approval. All right. Second. There's a second. There's one item that I wanted to make sure that you included in your motion that was there was a correction uh, on a <coughs> name change uh, uh, to the uh, gentleman from Fries and Nichols. It was uh, listed as Troy and it should be Trey. And so uh, I assume you'll accept that, that change. Okay, seeing no... Uh, other thing, will you please go ahead and vote? Thank you very much. Item number 13C, well, I'm sorry, item number 16 under individual considerations is consider a resolution of the City Council of the City of Duncanville, Texas, award a bid, approve a contract, and change order for one for pipe bursting wastewater improvements in the West Park Estates in Flame West Editions to 
XL4 Construction LLC in the amount of $929,452.50, authorizing the city manager to issue and execute the appropriate purchase orders and documents and providing an effective date. Mr. Brownlee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, now we're excited to bring this project to you. This is for the award of our FY15 pipe bursting improvements. Um, it's located in the Flame West and West Park additions. This is um, just west or just east of uh, Lakeside Park, north of Central, between um, Lakeside Park and Peach Street. So it's kind of in the center part of town, central part of town, a little bit on the western side. Uh, the project originally included about 8,500 feet of uh, pipe bursting in those two additions. And we had budgeted the project at $1.2 million. Um, we'd received six bids, and XL4 was the low bidder, and their bid was determined to be a responsive bid. Uh, the next lowest bid was from Circle C Construction for uh, 932000 This is a summary of the bids, and as you can see, the low bidder is um, substantially less than the next bidder. I think it's about $190,000 less. So, you know, if you throw out the high and the low, it's right around the 1.1, the 1 1.2 1 that we budgeted. So we feel really fortunate that we got a, a discount on this. And, you know, one of the reasons we feel like we got this discount is because we worked with this contractor in the past, and they were actually our contractor last year, and they came back this year, gave us an even better price. Um, because the prices were so good, we're asking the council award this contract for the base amount plus a change order in the amount of 25%, which is the maximum allowed by state law. So given the prices, we really feel like this is the way to go. Uh, we're still within our original budget, and that, that's great. That's just great. Um, now what we're doing is we're adding um, additional footage to the project. So we're going from about 8,500 feet to 10,000 plus feet of pipe. So that's meets and exceeds our original goals to do 10,000 feet this year. Um, the benefit to this project is there's many benefits, but one of the major benefits is it's going to really reduce I&I &I in our system. Uh, one of the things that happens during a rain event is we get a lot of infiltration into the system from groundwater. And because the pipes aren't sized to convey the sewer and the groundwater, we get it, it comes back up through the manholes and overflows back into the creeks, which is a no-no environmentally. We don't, we don't do that, we try not to. But it happens, and the way to correct this is the kind of projects that we're doing. Um, to summarize, um, the Horn Branch drainage basin, it, it goes through Lakeside Park, that's kind of the upper end of it. We're gonna be in the West Park and Flame West additions. Uh, we had a, about 8,500 feet in the original project. We're adding um, over 1,700 linear feet for, it'll be over 10,000 feet. Um, the benefits to the project will include not only the I&I, &I, but um, we spend a lot of time maintaining pipes, cleaning pipes, and uh, doing point repairs on pipes, and uh, those activities will, we won't have to do any of that probably for another 25 to 50 years, hopefully. Dennis is looking at me funny, he says, no, maybe 10 years. <laughs> But it will be a, it will definitely cut down our time on, out on the job site. Uh, the total contract amount, including the change order, is still under a million dollars, nine hundred twenty-nine dollars, four hundred fifty-two dollars and fifty cents. This is the project area. It's a little bit difficult when we try to show you a part of the city, but if you can visualize Lakeside Park there on the left side of the screen, and just east of that, north of Center Street, is where our project area is. So, great project. With that, I'm open for questions. Questions? Councilwoman Thomas? I'd like for you to explain pipe bursting. Pipe bursting would be the act of physically bursting the pipe by pulling a tool through, leading with the tool through the pipe. You burst the pipe either just by statically bursting it with the force of the of the tube there's there's other tools that actually are pneumatic and they, they give you a little extra 
bang at the end of the pipe. We're not doing that. They tend to be loud and they can also damage other utilities. But so what we're going to be doing is static pull. We start at one manhole, run a cable back, pull the tool through with the pipe behind it. So as the tool goes through, it expands the pipe. The new pipe follows in right behind it. The existing earth settles right back in, sucks right back in around the pipe. And we go back the same day, reconnect the services, and we're back in business. Mr. Brownlee, I understand that you can expand it quite a bit by doing that. You can, um, depending on the soil type and the, the type of pipe material. And, you know, rule of thumb is kind of two diameters is pretty safe. You know, just say we're going from a 6 to an 8, that's one diameter. We could go to a 6 to a 10. It's not inconceivable to go to a larger size pipe, but you just have to be careful when you start doing that because if you get stuck, you know, depending on where it is, it could be in a bad spot, but you got to dig it up regardless. So you want to be prudent and you want to make sure that, you know, you follow the parameters that are, that are out there. But yes, yeah, that's one thing we are doing. I failed to mention that. We are going from a 6 to an 8. We're leaving the eight as eight because it's the hydraulically we're adequate, but the cost of an eight is the same as a six basically, and it's easier to maintain, easier to get a camera in, and just basically a, just a little bit better pipe. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Harvey. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate you explaining the process of pipe bursting to us. Uh, what is the advantage of doing pipe bursting over the traditional method of uh, replacing sewer pipes? Well, if you, if you look at apples to apples, just say you're crossing a major road. You don't want to go open cut across that road because it would be very disruptive to the traffic and very disruptive to the citizens. So um, even, even under a minor street or you know, just a residential street or even going up an alley, it's still much less um, of a burden to the citizen because it's quicker and it's less digging. There's still some digging because you have to reconnect each service. So you dig a hole, you know, each individual house gets a little hole, then they fill it back in. But for me, and in addition to, usually you get a cost savings, not always, but usually. Um, it's the speed and the lack of disruption. But you combine all those benefits together and the prices we're getting this year, you just can't beat it. It's a good deal. Councilman Schwartz. Um, this is a well needed project. It was needed years ago. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see that it's coming and especially glad that we're able to put the change order on there because that area where the change order is is downstream and that's where the overflowing manholes, all the stuff flows to. So in, I know in years past, we've had a lot of problems there on Tanglewood. So I'm, I'm glad that we were able to get this. Yeah, the, the manhole at, at the outfall to that addition is, a, is a, a major bad actor. So this project is gonna, uh, we think, eliminate that problem. Yeah, the, there's one house in there that catches a lot every time we have a heavy rain. I, it's I not good when the sewer overflows. <laughs> and, and I've been retired five years. Uh, I, I, I want to bring up the caution that I brought up in the briefing session. Uh, a 25% change order is, is a maximum change order allowed by law. And uh, we're going to have to be very, very careful that we don't have any overruns on this project. So hopefully this contractor will only have underruns and not overruns. And yes, sir. We'll end up with a little bit of money left. Okay, anyone else? Oh, Councilwoman Jameson, are you sure light back on? Uh -oh. oh, your mic is. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Council. You've heard the, uh, the ordinance read. You've heard the exclamation. Is there a motion concerning this item? Uh, I'll move approval. Second. There's a motion and a second. We uh, have asked for discussion and questions, so... At this time, seeing none, will you please vote? Thank you very much. Item number 17 is to consider a resolution of the City Council of the City of Duncanville, Texas, approving the proposal for city paid employee and retiree medical employee life and long-term disability insurance with uh, 
meriting and uh, Cigna and authorizing the city manager to execute the necessary documents. Talking about insurance. Um, I bring for you tonight the city's recommendation on um, city paid medical life and long-term disability. Um, I preface by saying in May we did um, put word out on the street for a request for a proposal and we were very fortunate to receive many responses per your uh, city council packet. You saw the list of responses that we did receive. So we were able to um, choose from a uh, large group of uh, respondents. What the city recommends for medical and pharmacy benefits is um, Maritain Health. What Maritain Health is, is a third party administrator co company, which we are accustomed to um, using at the moment with TML. They are third party, which means that they're not a carrier, that we contract with them to process our claims and to um, provide our coverage, but they're not the actual carrier. Uh, Maritain is with Aetna and it's backed by Aetna. Um, choosing Maritain overall reduction, we will see a uh, 10, uh, 10, 20, 10% in uh, reduction in fixed and anticipated uh, claims cost. Um, again, it is a, a TPA environment which we are used to, which means that we'll get um, probably more personal um, attention versus choosing United Healthcare. They're a very large carrier with small little fish in a very large ocean. Um, again, Maritain is backed and owned by Aetna, so we will be utilizing the Aetna network. Um, Choosing Maritain, we will also receive a two-month waiver in administration fees and free one-year wellness initiatives such as biometric screenings and lunch and learns, those type of education. So that'll come in very handy as we roll out and implement in a wellness program. Um, doing a network analysis, what they call in the healthcare industry is a geo-access, which is data used to analyze the accessibility of healthcare networks. And within 10 miles of Duncanville, 97% of primary care physicians are within that network. Um, specialists, again, 97% are in the network within 10 miles and hospitals, 98%. So what that tells you is that any disruption that may occur from switching from our current carrier to uh, Aetna will be very limited and uh, employees won't have to find a new provider and that sort of thing. Um, on the basic life insurance and long-term disability, we received four proposals. Um, we recommend uh, Cigna, which is our current um, provider for city paid basic life insurance and city paid um, accidental death and dismemberment coverage. Um, continuing with Cigna and adding on the city paid long-term disability, um, that actually reduces our rates by 22%, which comes to about $5,600. Um, we are recommending to add long-term disability, which comes um, to $30,720 um, annual cost. Um, we, back in 2009, after the, um, during that recession, chose to remove or to, to cut long-term disability to try to save some money with our benefits. So we're now trying to um, add that back. Um, our voluntary employee independent life insurance is also with Cigna um, and will remain with Cigna. And then we're recommending a switch for voluntary dental and vision to be with Cigna. So it's easy to remember that life insurance and dental and vision, it's all with Cigna. But that's 100% voluntary, so there's no city funding towards those two products. Um, just so you can see kind of what our premium contribution structure looks like, um, based on our healthy claims um, this past year, our balance and the money that we have in reserves, um, we're not recommending any premium changes to the city, no recommended changes to, to the budget in that regard. We're not recommending any changes to city employee contributions. All will remain the same as it has been. So that's good news. For the retirees, what we are recommending is a 5% increase in the dependent portion. Um, we pay a large subsidy on behalf of the retirees. And I had to break it out this way, which is, might be easier to read within your packet with the chart that um, our advisors IPS provided you, or provided. Um, the increase really is not as significant as you, as you may think. Um, so when you're looking at the dependent portion for the retiring spouse, retiring child, retiring family, that that increase is actually minimal. Um, comparing ours uh, with the best Southwest cities, uh, Lancaster, DeSoto, and Cedar Hill, Duncanville is in the green. Um, this shows you what 
with the 5% increase, what our rates look like compared to their rates in those cities. So as you can see, um, we really are in line um, with what we charge retirees for their insurance. And then um, we're not proposing to make any plan design changes whatsoever to our um, plan this year. Um, we were able to significantly change our plan last year, as you may remember, um, so which is good we're not having to um, make any changes there. So just wanted to show you a brief snapshot of what that looks like. So any questions? You made the comment that uh, we significantly changed last year the plan. We upgraded the plans. We didn't right, we decrease. did. We were able to significantly reduce the um, out-of-pocket maximums. We didn't change the deductibles, but we significantly reduced the um, out-of-pocket maximums for an individual and for a family. Right. And, and we also per years go go forward. We can even do better than absolutely. Than we have, so. I think we've got a good handle on it. I appreciate all the work that you put in on this thing, you and staff do, because I think that it's, uh, we're going in the right direction. It may not be where we want to be, but we're going in the right direction. I also want to make a note, if I may, I mean, we're continuing to keep the gap insurance, which we um, added last year, which helps those on our PPO plan to provide um, cash flow in the event that they do have to go inpatient or outpatient procedures that have affect their deductible, so we're able to continue that as well to help them with their cash flow. Good, good. Councilman Swartz. Cut your mic on. I'm a retired former city employee, and but I am over the age of 65, so the insurance that we're talking about tonight do, I, does not affect me at all. I don't participate in it. Um, I, I appreciate all the, the hard work that you and your staff and, and helpers and, and the other <laughs> city staff have done on this. I know there was an awful lot of concern earlier this year about what was going to happen on the retiree part of the insurance, and I'm sure that also played over to the employee side, but the retiree insurance could have really taken a jump if we had dropped it and forced Absolutely. them to go on the open market, and I know that uh, most of the retirees want to thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate the fact that we're able to add back the long-term disability. That was a benefit that was, it disappeared during the recession. I'm glad we're able to get it back. There's other things that I want to get back to. Uh, we're not going to do it tonight, but I, I want to continue to have us work on that. But I primarily just want to thank you for the, the work that you did on this and, and helping keep this cost down as, as much as you did. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Got off easy. <laughs> Item number uh, 18 is to take any necessary appropriate action as a result of the closed ex executive session. Oh, we have to, this is considered a resolution. So oh, it is a resolution, yes. Okay. Well, you've heard the exclamation, you've heard the caption. Um, is there a motion? May I move for approval? Okay, hey, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, will you please vote? Oops. Just the wrong button. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Item number 18 is take any necessary or appropriate action as a result of the uh, closed executive session. There was no action taken in the, in the executive session. So uh, that, item number 18 will not be necessary. And item number 19, I guess, is adjourned. We are adjourned at 8 o'clock straight up and down.